Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. Venus and the moon at dawn, plus the zodiacal light at night. Hey there, Stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, Outreach Astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory, and I'll be your guest host this month on Stargazer. Next week, I've got some bright stuff for you in the morning and a faint, subtle light in the evening that I'll bet most of you have never seen. Almost a thousand years ago, the Persian poet Omar Khayyam, in his book of poetry called The Rubiat, wrote his most famous line, a jug of wine, a loaf of bread, and thou beside me singing in the wilderness. But elsewhere in the Rubiat, Omar made a poetic allusion to a mysterious false dawn, as opposed to the real dawn, which can only be seen at a certain time of year. And happily, next week is your best chance this year to see the evening version of this faint light, which I'll call the false dusk. Next week is good because there will be no bright moonlight to wipe out this delicate astronomical phenomenon. Let me tell you all about it and what you have to do to find it. Okay, if we could go way out into space and look down on our solar system with superhuman vision, we would notice a faint yet vast cloud of cosmic dust extending outward from the sun in the plane of the orbits of Mercury, Venus, and slightly beyond. And while you might think it would be impossible to see this super faint cloud from Earth, nevertheless in March, in the evening, when the plane of our Earth's orbit is almost vertical to the horizon, we can, under the right conditions. And these conditions require that there is no bright moonlight and that you must be far away from city lights because even the faintest moonlight or urban lighting will wipe out the extremely delicate ethereal glow of the false dusk. As a general rule, if you can see the Milky Way from where you're observing, you have a good chance to see this rare phenomenon next week. To see it, look toward the west about two hours after sunset. It will look like a wedge or a cone-shaped dim patch of light about the same brightness as the Milky Way, and it will extend from the horizon about one-third to one-halfway up to the zenith, a ghostly, faintly glowing, rounded pyramid of light. Now, the scientific name of this phenomenon is the zodiacal light, and it's caused by sunlight reflected from all those trillions and trillions of dust particles, which make up the great cosmic cloud. Additionally, if you've ever seen a similar oval-shaped glow directly overhead at midnight, you would be seeing the zodiacal light's sister phenomenon called the Gegenschein, or counterglow. And I personally wonder whether any poet ever wrote about that. At any rate, remember that next week is your best chance to see the evening zodiacal light, which I admit is very elusive. But if you find it, I think you'll know why it appeared in poetry centuries before it appeared in scientific writings. Now, for something a lot brighter, but not as conveniently timed, look east before dawn next week and you'll have a chance to spot a fading crescent moon having a close encounter with the brightest planet of them all. Monday, March 28th, about an hour before sunrise, look east and just above the horizon you should find Venus, if the clouds cooperate. Look up to its right for the 24-day-old waning crescent moon, about 30 degrees away. The moon will get closer to Venus each day. Tuesday, the moon will be a bit skinnier and a lot closer. Then, things really start to pick up on Wednesday. The moon will be only 10 degrees away and getting skinnier. The best day will be Thursday with an extremely skinny, slender sliver of a moon passing only 5 degrees above Venus. And keep in mind that even though they might look close together in the sky, that Venus is over 400 times farther away than the moon. So. Get outside before sunrise next week to see the moon and Venus, or get out after sunset while there's no moon. Make sure you're far from city lights and see if you can see what inspired an ancient poet. I think you'll find it inspiring too. Keep looking up. Make the Stars Your Own is available on DVD or VHS for $19.95.